Hello, and welcome to Creative Cow's look at the AJA Color Box. We have with us Tim Walker, who is Senior Product Manager at AJA Video Systems. Tim, it's great to have you on. Thank you. Happy to be here, Bree. Now, I wasn't able to attend IBC 2022, but I did hear back that Colorbox was one of the most exciting products that people got to see unveiled at IBC this year. What was the reception like on your end? Well, it was, first of all, awesome to be back at a trade show, especially the IBC in Amsterdam, launching a brand new product. The attendance there was great, and uh, the Colorbox launch or introduction there was uh really, really well received. And there's a lot of people who came through our, our booth to, to check it out. So it's really exciting to be A, back at a trade show and C, B, or B, be introduced in a brand new product like this and having uh, all the excitement uh, around it that we generated. It was a really great show. So would you like to just kind of quickly introduce the AJA Color Box to our Creative Cow audience? Sure. Yeah. So Colorbox is a brand new converter from AJA. It's a single channel inline color transform device designed to support 4K, SDR, and HDR color managed workflows. Uh, just looking at the hardware for a little bit, it's got an on off switch in the front and uh, a couple of buttons and the business end on the, the rear, which has got 12 GSDI input and a loop out, as well as a processed uh, 12 GSDI video output. And uh, it also has an, an HDMI 2.0 output that supports 4K HDR, as well as an Ethernet port that serves up our built-in web server. So it's a pretty cool product from the hardware perspective, but what it's doing on the inside is even more impressive. And what sort of challenges does the AJA color box address for these live production environments? Yeah, well, live production, we're seeing a lot more uh, both 4K uh, productions happening as well as HDR productions. And uh, to do HDR in live production, there's still a lot of SDR sources that are being used. And you have to convert SDR to HDR and HDR to SDR, depending on where you're at in the workflow. And uh, so to do these conversions, it's really kind of still a little bit unsettled as to the color science that should be used. And each application or, or customer may decide to, to do it differently. They may wanna use uh, NBC Universal LUTs, or they may wanna use BBC HLG LUTs, or maybe they've got their own LUTs that they wanna use. Um, so there's really a wide range of ways that people can do um, color conversions. And the color box helps solve that problem by providing a ton of tools uh, for somebody to do those conversions. And this is looking at the, the user interface that's served up directly from the, the color box. And the first thing you'll notice is this video preview uh, window, which shows you, you know, the video that's uh, coming in and out of the box. Right now I've got the output selected, which shows me what it looks like as it's gone through the, the color processing pipeline. Uh, but you'll notice down here, we've got this AJA color pipeline which is comprised of these different processing nodes. And we tried to make this pretty intuitive for the operator by simply showing an SDI input here, and then the different seven nodes of processing, which can be clicked on and then configured on the right-hand side. The blue line indicates the signal path as it's going through the nodes. If it's going over a node, it means it's not a part of the path. If I enable something, then it turns blue and shows that it's a part of the path. So pretty user intuitive. In the AJA color pipeline, we've this is where you would load in user LUTs. If you had your own custom LUTs that you wanted to use to help do a conversion, whether it's from SDR to HDR or camera log format to a display format, this is the mode that you would wanna use. And you can load in your own 3D LUTs, but moreover, one, you have the ability to load in 1D LUTs, 3x3 matrices, additional 1D LUTs, your 3D LUT, which is kind of at the core, and then additional 1D, 3x3, and 1D LUTs. And this looks like a, a lot, but it's kind of a color processing pipeline like you might find in a software color corrector. And this is all done in hardware, giving you similar control over the, the color and look of the conversion. Um, but by breaking it out into these different nodes gives you better precision or control over the actual color processing. Um, 
And lastly, here we've got this other little node, which is called the overlay, which when enabled allows me to do different things. I can put on different uh, text, user definable text. And here I got text, maybe you wanna have camera one, and then maybe you wanna have the person's name below it. And it'll show you uh, just that user text if I want. Maybe if I'm doing some uh, troubleshooting, I may wanna not have that and show the input and output format. And this will show me uh, those different bits of information here on the user interface uh, or on the output image, I should say. Uh, and it'll show me other things, time code, presence, closed captioning, pipeline configuration to show me the status of all the different nodes in here and what's loaded and what's not. Um, but a pretty cool tool to, to help our operators do their job better and faster. So this is the AJA color pipeline. I've got a 3D LUT here. I can simply turn this on and select a LUT from my library and it'll automatically load in there and show the results on the processed output on this image uh, preview. So pretty easy to use. And again, this is where operators, whether they're doing live production or on set work would be spending their time with their user LUTs. But because this is a tool that I mentioned that solves a lot of different problems for uh, different applications, you could say, well, you know, I prefer to use the Colorfront color science. And AJA has partnered with Colorfront over the years and really have a strong relationship with them. Um, they did some color science for our FSHDR product, which was a very popular product and lots of different applications. And here we've got simple drop downs to be able to use their color science to go between SDR, HDR, HLG, and PQ, um, and simply select your transform and turn this on, and you've got their color science. Another uh, new and exciting processing pipeline is this Orion Convert algorithm. And this is something that's new to the market, something we introduced at IBC with Colorbox, and it comes from a collaboration that we did with a company called Chromarama. And they're the ones behind the LUTs that were developed for the NBC Universal LUTs, and I'll get to that in a minute. But what we've done with Orion Convert is we give you different tools to have maybe finer control over your color transform. If you're going from HLG to SDR, as I've got it set up here, I can select and modify uh, pre-compression in the HLG domain by setting a knee point in an amount, and I can set my HDR and SDR anchor points. And then in the SDR color space and dynamic range, I can have a post-compression in amount. So I get finer control over my highlight, roll off, um, and gamut roll off through the, the conversion. So that's one thing is the control over it. Two, uh, once you've got this set up, you can save it as a preset, simply store it as a preset as an HLG to SDR conversion. If I wanna do the inverse of this conversion, it's pretty straightforward. I simply come here and I select the opposite, SDR to HLG, and the math flips. It inverts to pre-expansion and post-expansion, and now I've got a matched pair of conversions which allow me to do round tripping, which is extremely important in, in live, live production. And I can simply save that as another preset and export it and send it to everybody else who's got a color box doing their transform. So um, pretty compelling set of tools there. Thirdly, we're actually not using a 3D LUT in this pipeline. We're using a floating point math. So if you're familiar with 3D LUTs, you know that we have to do some interpolation. And in our case, we do tetrahedral interpolation, which is great. Um, but if you wanted to go a step above that, you'd do the conversion in, in floating point math. And that's what we're able to do here. And it eliminates interpolation errors. So um, it's, a, it's extremely powerful for what it does in this hardware platform. Um, we also, this is a licensable option within Colorbox, but maybe people also would prefer to have the BBC HLG LUTs. So that's the color science that they're familiar with. It's the color science that they wanna use. We've got these that are, these different LUTs that are built into Colorbox, which allows them to simply select the LUT that they need for their conversion. And it's applied here. 
We also give them um, an RGB color corrector that they could use to color correct the signal before it goes into the transform, as well as a proc amp. So the BBC HLG LUTs have been widely used for a while in live production. So this is a common um, set of LUTs that people are familiar with how to use. Um, the other pipeline we have is the NBCU LUTs. So by selecting it, I get access to the different, it's six different LUTs that they've developed um, for color science that meets their needs. And I can use these now in my in my color box. And again, it's got an RGB color corrector and a proc amp as well. But all this to show you, Bree, that the, the color box has got all the tools necessary for somebody to walk into a production environment and say, no matter what you feed me, I've got something in my color box that can help me get from A to B, you know, for the different color science that the customer may want, may want to use. And moreover, as we're talking about live and even onset is, even though we're doing all this amazing processing, one thing that I wanted to make sure that the design team hit was a timing requirement. So live happens live once, and we don't want to be introducing any additional delay or any lip sync issues or anything like that. So um, all of this processing happens in less than half of a video line no matter if you're doing 4K or 1080p or UHD or whatever your video processing is, it's all happening in less than half of a video line, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Also, I heard you say before that the color box stores this web page, right? And then what you connect it to a laptop, is that right? maybe yeah. uh, wireless or is it hardwired and then this comes up and has all the everything that you need yeah so there's different ways to have the user interface served up to you and one as i mentioned is the rj45 so direct connection on the back but we also support a couple of different um, third-party wi-fi adapters so usb um, wireless adapters and they are um you can plug those in directly to our USB on the go port on the front of the product and communicate with the box wirelessly uh, to be able to serve up the exact same web page that I was just showing you. So yeah, you can control the box wirelessly or, or with a hardwired connection. Okay. And what benefits do your third party integrations offer users as well? Yeah. So I'll go back to the user interface here. There's there's a couple, right? So depending on what mode you're in, you may have an RGB color corrector and I can actually configure my 1D LUT to be a color corrector. And a lot of people who are using these tools don't necessarily want to have to control it with a slider. They'd rather have a hardware based control panel. And so we've integrated, uh, well, other people, third parties have integrated control of color box to, into their products. And one of those is Scarhoy. Scarhoy has developed, uh, can, they develop hardware based control panels with knobs and buttons, and you can control the color box parameters from their hardware. Uh, we have a similar integration with Cyan View, which is another popular hardware based control surface for controlling color correctors. And they also have native control of our, of our product. If you're onset doing onset look management which we also support another application for this our 3d LUT here we can set into a dynamic mode and what that means is it's now controllable by other third parties um, we've got integrations with palm Ford's live grade pro and studio products where you can have the LUT loaded into their tool and you can adjust the cdls and have that LUT and CDL downloaded into our 3D LUT for real-time video processing, um, all the way up to, again, 4K HDR. I didn't mention this before, but we do support 444 12-bit RGB workflows in Colorbox. Um, but so we've got an integration with Palmfort that allows them to control the LUT dynamically. Also, a uh, similar integration with Assimilates Live Looks and Live Assist programs for onset look management and they can control the 3D LUT in a similar, similar fashion. So yeah, we've done a lot with third party integrations, be it in the pipelines themselves with Colorfront and Orion and BBC and NBC, but also with other people controlling, controlling the product. And 
Um, we do have an API that's available for other third parties that want to control it as well. So we're totally open to having um, other people control the product for their applications. Uh, something else I'd like to show you, Bree, that I didn't mention before is um, we've got this bypass button here, which allows me to quickly kind of A, B looks, go see what my original signal looks like, passing around the processing and then bring it back and or turn it off and have it go through the processor so I can bypass the processing. But also I've got this frame store. And what's unique about this frame store is this allows me to uh, capture and recall images of the source that's coming through the, the product. And um, I can capture up to 4K 16-bit TIFF files with this device, which is something like no other LUT box on the market can can do. Um, so, as an example here, I've just you know loaded up this cap this frame that I've captured before, and I can capture like I said, TIFFs, PNGs, JPEGs, and I can quickly recall them um, simply by selecting it and selecting the recall button. If I want to capture some live video, I can do that as well simply by selecting a, a slot in here and selecting capture the output and I can capture the, the output, the processed output, or if I want to, I can capture the input pre-processed uh, of the pre-processed image. Maybe it's a camera log image that's coming in and I wanna capture that as a reference still and send it to, to people further down the line, I can do that. Um, so pretty powerful frame store. And if I'm not using it to capture images or recall images and run them through the pipeline, I can also turn on different test patterns. So I've got a lot of them. I got nine different test patterns that are built in um, that do different things. And I can convert the output format of my frame store to a wide range of, of different formats. It's a really powerful tool for setting the system up, making sure everything's being processed in the way that it should. Uh, so pretty cool node to have in the product of that frame store. And one last question that I'd like to clear up for people who have asked, can metadata be carried through? Yeah, well, it's a, it's a great question and it probably relates to um, camera ancillary metadata. And I'll just start by saying that our product, the color box passes through all Hank and Bank metadata. So Hank is the horizontal ancillary data and Bank being the vertical um, ancillary data. We do pass that through. Um, and in on-set kind of workflows, cameras output a lot of different ancillary metadata, and there isn't really a standard for how that ancillary data is formatted. So we knew from the get-go that we needed to make sure that we captured all of it and passed it through the, the product. So, um, so yeah, we do pass all the ancillary metadata through, including audio. So we don't strip any of the audio or anything like that. That all passes through as well. So great question. Tim, thank you so much for answering our questions here today and for coming on to the Creative Cow Show. Thanks for having me.